Hello and welcome to Wisdom Included. I'm Shelley Carney. This is a collaborative gathering place, especially for women to share personal stories, support, and advice. Wisdom Included. It's Friday with friends, and I'm happy to introduce you to my friends, mentors, and fellow entrepreneurs so they can share their stories with us. Today, I'd like you to meet my friend, Sue Scott. Hi, Sue. Tell us your story. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Shelley, for this opportunity. My name is Susan Scott, and I am co-owner and founder of Pig and Hippo Productions, mm -hmm. but I'm also a retired Air Force veteran of 20 years. Right. I was born in Michigan, but relocated to New Mexico in the late 1970s. My grandfather in the late 1800s had homesteaded out in Stanley, New Mexico. Mm. And so my father's dream was to come out and kind of feel how it was to be back then and, and write books about uh, the Southwest and things like that. So uh, my senior year of high school, we moved to Santa Fe and I graduated from Santa Fe High. Then I immediately went into UNM and got a, uh, a Bachelor of Art in Creative Writing with a minor in Cultural Anthropology. Hmm. Well, the interesting thing about that was I thought in my youth that I would be doing a double minor. It would have been the <laughs> cultural anthropology and music. Mm -hmm. But I soon found out that that was not going to happen. And um, after I graduated, I worked multiple jobs, uh, some at the same time, for about five years. And then I decided that I, it was imperative that I make some kind of change. I wasn't where I wanted to be. I wasn't out traveling the world, mm -hmm. writing about cool cultures and, you know, writing books and doing interviews and all that. So I really thought I need to make a change. And it was suggested to me at one time that I might be a good candidate for the Air Force by a former military person. And there was no how, no way I had even considered mm -hmm. joining any kind of United States Air Force. It just wasn't even in the cards and was not an option. However, it turned out to be a career and um, a very good one. So how did you go from... I wouldn't even consider it, and I'm <laughs> cultural anthropology and music, and and now I'm in the Air Force, uh, because that does seem to be quite the mind shift. It definitely was, mm -hmm. but for some bizarre reason, I seem to do better in a very structured environment where there were actual goals and um, checklists, and um, I went in as an administrator. So I was um, kind of always at the meat of things happening at the headquarters, and I was able to see all the kind of cool stuff that was going on and um, working with interesting subjects and documents and working with the sister services. And I still played music during that time frame mm -hmm. and um, still did a little bit of writing, mostly journaling at that time because I was very busy mm -hmm. but I kind of kept those in the background and never totally gave up anything have you done anything with those journals um, they are no longer in existence oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a lot of stuff upstairs okay well let's see um, so being in the military for 20 years what do you think are maybe the most important life lessons that you learned as a woman in the military well, the first one is rather a funny one, I think, mm -hmm. and that is never under never underestimate the power of the ladies' room. Okay, <laughs> you have to explain that one. <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet in the ladies' room, mm -hmm. and sometimes the best contacts and the best information can come out of just introducing yourself while you're washing your hands, and you may meet the base commander, who is a female, mm -hmm. and you may meet a one-star general in the bathroom and that's your chance to introduce yourself and say hey I'm Susan Scott I work over here in this department and if there's anything that you need I'd be happy to help you out or wow. if you're if you're in need of someone who has these abilities I'm here well I think I have to agree with you because anytime I'd at a convention or a large gathering of women and we're in the restroom together yes. we're all standing in line Mm -hmm. What better time to talk? And it seems like it's easier at that point. It really is. It puts everyone on the same playing field mm -hmm. and um, rank or prestige or 
uh, income is, is definitely not a factor in that particular room. <laughs> Very good. Um, but what was it like in the military? I mean, do you feel mm. that women have the equal say, the equal power in the military? Or was there a, a sort of a gap there with the men? Um, it, that's a very interesting question, and I'm going to be very careful answering it. <laughs> um, and they, well, keep in mind that this was many years ago. And... <laughs> right, right. Yes, this was a long time ago. <laughs> well, things are always improving in in that um, in that area of the military, and I think in other career fields as well. Mm. The thing that I really enjoyed about the Air Force was everyone got equal pay for equal work. Mm -hmm. It's all based on rank. Right. So if you want to make more money, it's not necessarily who you know, it's can you test for promotion, and are you filling all the squares that they're asking you to, such as leadership roles, um, community events, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really experience anything like that, and um, I don't think I were, was in, in any positions or jobs to really experience any kind of um, dichotomy or gender bias yeah gender bias mm -hmm. stuff like that so mm -hmm. I think I was very fortunate all right um, so what age and rank did you retire and then what did you look forward to after your retirement oh, well um, because I joined the Air Force late in life mm -hmm. I was 27 when I joined mm -hmm. which earned me the nickname grandma <laughs> in basic training and I you know, I was the best grandma out there I'll tell you that and um, so I retired 20 years later at 47, mm -hmm. which was actually late. Uh, most enlisted folks join right after high school, so they're 17, 18. So I was already, I always felt in my career that I was 10 years behind everybody else. Mm -hmm. My peers were um, higher ranking, and I was always striving, mm -hmm. oh, I got to make this rank because that's all my... My peers aren't that, and so I was always kind of running, playing catch-up. And your rank when you retired? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was a master sergeant, okay. which is in E7. Mm -hmm. And when I got promoted to master sergeant, uh, my husband, Sean, was with me, of course. And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited that I finally am. Now I'm equal with my peers. Mm. And he laughed, and he said, oh, no, he said, your peer group has already retired. <laughs> so I was still, still uh, running behind. But mm. it just goes to show that regardless of your age or your gender, if you have a goal in mind, you can definitely achieve it. It may take longer, but you can definitely get there. And starting late, you yeah. still made it to yeah. the finish line. Exactly. I sure did. So uh, did you feel that having the seven seven or eight years of extra life experience, mm -hmm. do you think that um, um, would have helped you, though? It definitely did. It definitely did. Looking at those that were fresh out of high school versus someone who's 27 and has lived a mm -hmm. life and had numerous other jobs, mm -hmm. it definitely helped a lot. And I was able to, um, I don't know if mentor is the proper word for that, but I was able to help them. Mm -hmm in some of the things that, as we know, as we get older, are not as important as you get older as they are when you're a little bit younger. And <laughs> Life getting is less through, dramatic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Getting through basic training and mm -hmm. being at their first duty station and stuff like that. So that definitely helped me out a lot mm -hmm. to help them. Yeah. Where are some of the places that you uh, traveled to in your career? Oh, it was great. My very first duty station was in Germany, mm -hmm. and I liked it so much I extended there. So I did about six or seven years there. Oh. It was wonderful. And um, then I went to England, mm -hmm. and that was wonderful as well. And my, uh, my third overseas duty station was in the Netherlands. And all of those places were such a great hub for traveling in Europe. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely wonderful, the tri-border area and all that kind of stuff. In fact, I met my husband, Sean, over there in England. Mm -hmm. We were neighbors. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we became best friends and then got married. So he was also in the Air Force, and he also did 20 years. So we really had that good common core mm -hmm. of uh, friendship and career. So it sounds like you had a really good experience. Would you recommend Air Force or other military service for women? I uh, really like the Air Force for women. I think it, well, any service is great, mm -hmm. depending on um, where your um, where your goals and things are. The Air Force is great. You have a great chance to um, um, elaborate on your education and um, traveling if you're going overseas. And especially for uh, women that have um, 
forward thinking ideas, it's a great leadership jump off to get in to get into that and, and help the the youngers come up and, and figure out where they want to be too. Great. So um, after you've retired, uh, what have you done that you've been excited about? Well, so many things, actually, and um, working with you. <laughs> and um, it's funny, um, our business, Pig and Helper Productions, has changed and evolved over the years. We originally started out making greeting cards for family and friends back when the software first came out to mm -hmm. make greeting cards. And we'd do up the little envelopes and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then it kind of changed. And when we moved back here to New Mexico, we got involved in film and media. Mm -hmm. And then Pig and Hippo Productions totally changed. So now we're able to collaborate and work with other production people, mm -hmm. such as yourself. Right. <laughs> and um, really make it, I won't say profitable, but um, <laughs> very <laughs> enjoyable and worthwhile. Okay. And now what are you doing? Well, now I am actually in a senior employment program. It's very cool. It's uh, funded by the state, mm -hmm. and it's for anyone who's 55 and older, and they take you in at a certain organization or company, and you work for them, and you learn new skills. So for someone like me, who came in back when DOS or whatever that program, WordStar, all those <laughs> weird old programs where you just had the green screen on the computer. Mm -hmm. It needs to improve their skills. I mean, after being out of the Air Force for almost 10 years, technology has definitely changed. Mm -hmm. So this is a program where um, older folks can go in and then after they get trained and feeling confident in what they're doing, then they can go out and get a real job doing something that they um, enjoy and just learned. Okay, and so what is your real job right now? Well, my real job <laughs> is, uh, well, actually right now I'm a data specialist. Okay. And I get to work with all kinds of cool reports and numbers and finance stuff, which I really like because it's data. Mm -hmm. And I think that will definitely help me, especially if I wanted to get a job for the state or government, back into the government, but in a totally different realm, that I would understand how those inner workings of... Um, fiscal year stuff works. And I understand that you've sort of incorporated your film and media into your yes, new job? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we sure have. This is really cool. Uh, Pig and Hippo Productions was asked to make a video to put on the um, Aging Network Division webpage uh, regarding our new Healthy Aging Training Academy, or HATA for short. <laughs> so we're, we're developing a lot of courses for anyone, really, because they're free to go on the uh, webpage and look at everything from hunting and gathering food to job searches to environmental safety. And they get a little certificate at the end when they're finished and get to do little knowledge checks. And it's cool because it's um, we've got the video and the animation and all that. So I'm still doing uh, digital media mm -hmm. and I'm still kind of doing government work and I'm still able to um, be a leader in a smaller way, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, leaning forward, bringing the technology in that they may not have. So it's been really cool so far. So speaking of being a leader, and I'm sure you got a lot of leadership training in the military as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some steps that everyday people like me can take to be uh, more of a leader in their community? I would say for me start small mm -hmm. you may already be leading in ways you don't even realize it could be from just helping someone i work a lot now with uh, older people older than myself <laughs> 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 and especially with technology i think it's really important to keep people current mm -hmm. so even if you're just looking to lead in a small way, take it person by person. Right. You don't need to run out and join a big committee or anything. But what I might do if I was interested in, in pursuing more leadership roles is go with somebody who was already a part of an organization and just hang out and watch them and see what's going on. You never know. You might just decide this is really cool. I think I'm going to step in here and see what I can do as well. Uh, there's so much stuff going on from technology to um, arts and media and all that. There are plenty of ways to lead that you don't necessarily don't have to be the leader. Mm -hmm. You can just lead and, and help folks out. Well, that's a great idea.
Um, so how can people learn more about uh, the aging Yes, the Aging Network Division <laughs> Aging and Network all that. Division. Yeah, great. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Our website is nmaging.state.nm.us. Okay, and, and there's we'll a... have that link in the description. Oh, good. Oh, I appreciate that. That'll help. It's awesome. It's a great place to check stuff out. And hopefully we'll have our Healthy Aging Training Academy stuff on there um, by the first of the year. Wonderful. I look forward to seeing that. And I know you're in the videos. So that's fun. Yes, exactly. We can all laugh and have a good, a good <laughs> giggle about that. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Sue, and telling us all about uh, your career and your Encore career. And I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Shelley. I appreciate it. And for Wisdom Included, I'm Shelley Carney. Leave a comment below if you are enjoying your retirement from a military career and tell me your story. If this is your first time here, please take a moment to subscribe. I'll continue to post new videos several times each week featuring personal stories, support, and advice, wisdom included.